A massive sinkhole swallows a man's lawn, revealing a hidden world beneath. Fifty years of secrets unravel as a family's land gives way to an extraordinary discovery. What lies at the bottom of this mysterious abyss? Crack! The deafening sound split the air on a quiet Sunday morning, shattering the predictable stillness of Hideaway Hills neighborhood in South Dakota. Albert Rise, who had been peacefully mowing his lawn, jumped in shock, his head snapping around toward the sound. His eyes widened in disbelief at the sight before him. Where his wife's prized rose bushes once stood, a gaping hole had appeared, swallowing a sizable chunk of his backyard. The massive sinkhole was dark and ominous and seemed to be growing larger with each passing second. Panic gripped Albert as he watched his perfectly manicured lawn disappear into the abyss. Without a second thought, he abandoned his lawnmower and sprinted to his neighbor's house, his heart pounding in his chest like a jackhammer. John, you've got to come quick, Albert gasped, his words tumbling out in a rush. There's a huge hole in my backyard. It just appeared out of nowhere while I was mowing the lawn. John Trudeau, Albert's next door neighbor, was enjoying his Sunday morning with a cup of coffee when Albert's frantic knocking interrupted his peace. When he opened the door, he found his neighbor pale-faced and breathless. John's eyebrows shot up in disbelief. A hole? What do you mean, Albert? I mean a massive sinkhole, Albert exclaimed, gesturing wildly with his hands. It swallowed up my wife's rose bushes and it's getting bigger by the second. I've never seen anything like it. John set his coffee mug down, concern replacing his initial skepticism. All right, let's go take a look. Without another word, the two men raced out of John's house and sprinted across the lawn to Albert's property, only to find that the situation had worsened. The hole had grown exponentially, now resembling a big swimming pool. The edges were crumbling, and more of Albert's once pristine lawn was vanishing into the darkness below. John, realizing the gravity of the situation, immediately called 911. Within minutes, the quiet neighborhood transformed into a hive of activity. Curious neighbors emerged from their homes, drawn by the commotion. Some gasped in shock, others brought out their phones to document the bizarre scene. As the chaos unfolded, Albert's mind raced. He couldn't help but think about how long his family had owned this land. My family has owned this property for over 50 years, he muttered, still in shock. Nothing like this has ever appeared before. Sirens wailed in the distance as the local law enforcement arrived on the scene. They quickly cordoned off the area with yellow tape, urging residents to keep their distance from the unpredictable terrain. As more people gathered to witness the unfolding drama, the air buzzed with fear and confusion. Soon, the neighborhood was swarming with emergency responders. Firefighters, paramedics, and even news crews descended upon the quiet suburb, their presence adding to the surreal atmosphere. Amidst the chaos, a man in a crisp suit arrived, introducing himself as Doug Huntrods, the emergency manager for Meade County. Doug's face was etched with concern as he surveyed the scene. After a brief consultation with the first responders, he addressed the growing crowd. Folks, he announced, we need to evacuate this area immediately. It's not safe here. His words sent a ripple of fear through the gathered residents. Questions flew from all directions. How long would they need to leave? Where would they go? What about their homes and possessions? Doug did his best to calm the mounting panic, assuring everyone that their safety was the top priority. About 12 families, including Albert and his wife, were forced to abandon their homes in a whirlwind of activity. The scene was heart-wrenching as people scrambled to gather their belongings. Children clutched beloved toys. Pets were hurriedly leashed, and essential documents were stuffed into hastily packed bags. The air was filled with a cacophony of barking dogs, crying children, and the worried voices of adults trying to make sense of their suddenly upended lives. As the evacuated families were escorted to a nearby school serving as a temporary shelter, news of the Hideaway Hills neighborhood sinkholes spread rapidly throughout the region. When word reached Adam Weaver, a local caver, with a reputation for exploring the unknown depths beneath the Earth's surface, he knew this was a job for his team. As he saw the footage of the massive sinkhole, his eyes lit up with a mixture of concern and excitement. He knew that his expertise could be valuable in this situation. Without hesitation, Adam reached for his phone and dialed the emergency management office. After a brief hold, he was connected to Doug Huntrods, the emergency manager for Meade County. Mr. Huntrods, Adam began, his voice firm and confident. This is Adam Weaver from the Paha Sapa Grotto Caving Club. I've been watching the news about the sinkholes in Hideaway Hills neighborhood, and I believe my team and I can help. Doug, who had been fielding calls nonstop since the incident began, paused for a moment. Go on, Mr. Adam. I'm listening. Adam quickly explained his background in cave exploration and the capabilities of his team. We have extensive experience in navigating and mapping underground systems in this region. 
We're equipped to safely explore these sinkholes and potentially provide valuable information about their extent and stability. Doug considered the offer carefully. The situation was unprecedented, and they needed all the help they could get. After a moment of deliberation, he replied, Your expertise could indeed be valuable, Mr. Adam. Can you assemble your team and meet me at the site? Absolutely, Adam responded, a hint of excitement creeping into his voice. We'll be there with our full gear, ready to assist in any way we can. As he hung up the phone, Adam felt a surge of adrenaline. This was exactly the kind of challenge he lived for. He immediately began making calls to his most trusted caving companions. Adam quickly assembled a group of fellow cave enthusiasts from the Pajasapa Grotto, a local caving club known for their expertise in subterranean exploration. They arrived at the scene fully equipped with helmets, ropes, and powerful lights ready to plumb the depths of the mysterious cavern that had so rudely interrupted Albert's lawn. Doug Huntrods greeted Adam and his team with visible relief. Thank goodness you're here, he said, gesturing towards the sinkholes. We need to know what we're dealing with down there. The team of six explorers stood at the edge of the sinkhole, peering into its depths. The hole was even more impressive up close, a yawning maw in the earth that seemed to breathe cool air from its depths. Adam's eyes gleamed with excitement as he secured his helmet. All right, team, he said. Let's see what secrets this hole is hiding. One by one, the cave explorers repelled into the darkness, their headlamps cutting through the gloom like beacons. As they descended, the smooth walls of the sinkhole gave way to a more complex structure. This doesn't look natural, one team member observed, his voice echoing in the confined space. It's too uniform, too engineered. Their suspicions were confirmed when Adam's foot struck something solid at the bottom of the shaft. Shining his light downward, he let out a gasp of surprise. Half buried in the dirt, was an old mining cart. Its metal frame rusted but still recognizable. Guys, Adam called out, his voice tinged with excitement. I think we've stumbled onto something big here. Pushing forward, the team found themselves in a vast underground chamber. Their lights couldn't reach the far walls, but what they illuminated was enough to take their breath away. Ancient mining tools lay scattered about, and enormous rusted machines stood silent. The walls were pockmarked with drill holes, showing that people had once been busy working in this underground place. But the true shock came when their lights fell upon something utterly out of place in this underground realm. Wedged between two massive boulders was a car, and not just any car, but a beautifully preserved 1954 Ford Crestline Sunliner. The classic vehicle's chrome still gleamed in the light of their headlamps, seemingly untouched by the passage of time. Christopher Pellerin, one of Adam's team members, voiced the question on everyone's mind. How in the world did a car get down here? It was as if they'd stumbled upon a surreal underground museum where the exhibits defied all logic. Their exploration revealed even more surprises. Not far from the crest line, they discovered an older truck, its nose buried in a pile of rocks as if it had driven straight into the ground. The team spent hours mapping out the extent of the mine, which stretched an astonishing 2,300 feet, nearly half a mile of tunnels and chambers hidden beneath the unsuspecting neighborhood above. When Adam and his team finally exited the sinkhole, people were waiting for answers. As they recounted their findings, emergency responders and some of the residents on site listened with awe and disbelief. The idea that such an extensive network of mines had been lying dormant beneath their feet for decades was mind-boggling. Within days, the Hideaway Hills neighborhood had transformed from a quiet suburb to the center of a media frenzy as news of the discovery spread. Scientists, Historians and cave lovers rushed to the town, excited to explore the surprising underground maze. Research into local records revealed that the mine had once belonged to a company called Dakota Plaster. Opened in the 1920s, the mine operated for about 30 years before being abandoned. But why had it been left intact with equipment and vehicles still in place? And how had its existence faded from local memory so completely? These questions added an air of mystery to an already incredible story. Historians and archivists delved deep into old newspapers, county records, and personal accounts from elderly residents to piece together the mine's history. They uncovered a story of economic boom and bust, where the mine had once been a significant employer in the area before abruptly closing due to financial difficulties. The sudden closure had left workers unemployed and the community reeling, perhaps explaining why the mine's existence had been purposefully forgotten over time. The presence of the vehicles in the mine, particularly the pristine 1954 Ford Crestline Sunliner, sparked numerous theories. Some speculated about an elaborate tax evasion scheme, while others suggested a tragic accident that had been covered up. Each new piece of information uncovered raised more questions than answers, 
fueling public fascination with the Hideaway Hills neighborhood mystery. While the discovery was exciting from a historical and scientific perspective, it presented significant challenges for the displaced residents of the Hideaway Hills neighborhood. The ground beneath their homes was now deemed unstable, making it unsafe for them to return. To compound their troubles, insurance companies refused to cover the damage, citing exclusions for sinkholes in their policies. This left many families in a precarious financial situation, facing the prospect of losing their homes and possessions with little recourse. Local and state officials scrambled to find solutions, exploring options for federal disaster relief and considering legal action against the long-defunct Dakota Plaster Company or its successors. The situation sparked a heated debate about land use regulations and the responsibilities of current property owners for historical industrial activities. Some argued that the local government should have been aware of the mine's existence and taken preventative measures, while others placed the blame on the mining company for inadequately sealing the mine upon closure. Faced with this crisis, the community of Hideaway Hills neighborhood rallied together in an inspiring display of solidarity. Online fundraisers were launched to help the affected families. Local churches opened their doors to provide temporary shelter. Neighbors organized yard sales and bake sales, pooling their resources to support those who had lost their homes. The affected families, including Albert and his wife, decided to take legal action. They discovered that county officials had been aware of the abandoned mine when they approved the construction of the Hideaway Hills neighborhood. This revelation led to a $75.5 million lawsuit against the developers, alleging negligence in failing to disclose the potential danger. As the legal battle unfolded, attention turned to the abandoned mine's historical significance. The discovery of old mining equipment and the 1954 Ford Crestline Sunliner sparked interest among local historians and mining enthusiasts. The South Dakota State Historical Society sent a small team to document the finds and assess their historical value. Led by local historian Thomas Burke, the team carefully photographed and cataloged visible artifacts from a safe distance, as the unstable nature of the mine made physical recovery too dangerous. Burke explained during a community meeting, the abandoned equipment gives us insights into the mining practices of the time and helps us understand why the mine was eventually closed. The Meade County Historical Society used this opportunity to create a small exhibition at the local library, featuring photographs of the discovery, historical documents about the mine's operations, and oral histories from elderly residents who remembered when the mine was active. The modest display included maps showing the extent of the mining tunnels and educational materials about the geology of the Hills region. Local schools arranged field trips to the library exhibition, where students learned about their community's mining heritage and the importance of proper land surveys before construction. The experience sparked discussions about safety regulations and how they had evolved over the decades. A few enterprising residents started offering guided walking tours of the neighborhood, explaining the history of the area from a safe distance from the sinkholes. These tours, while small in scale, provided some economic activity for the community as they dealt with the displacement of affected families. The incident also led to increased interest in the region's mining history. The Meade County Board of Commissioners allocated funds for a comprehensive survey of other potential abandoned mines in the area to prevent similar incidents in the future. Local universities seized the opportunity to conduct geological studies, bringing students to the site for educational purposes. The community's focus remained primarily on supporting the displaced families and seeking resolution to the legal challenges they faced. While the historical aspects of the discovery provided some distraction and educational value, the residents of Hideaway Hills neighborhood were more concerned with practical matters like finding permanent housing solutions and determining liability for the damage to their properties. As one resident noted, We've certainly learned a lot about our town's history, but right now we're more focused on our future and making sure something like this doesn't happen again. The Hideaway Hills neighborhood incident had far-reaching implications beyond the small South Dakota town. City planners and construction companies across the country began to reassess their practices, placing greater emphasis on thorough geological surveys before residential development approvals. Some insurance companies also revised their policies to address similar risks. Albert Rise, like many affected residents, struggled with the aftermath. He spent months navigating legal challenges and insurance claims while adjusting to life away from his longtime home. The sinkhole discovery, while historically significant, left a lasting impact on the community's sense of security and trust in local governance. Five years after that fateful morning, the day Albert Rye's peaceful lawn mowing routine was dramatically interrupted by the sudden appearance of a massive sinkhole, he and the other families who had lost their homes settled in a specially designed area of the Hideaway Hills neighborhood. Their new homes had advanced safety features, a reminder of what they had learned from the sinkhole. 
Albert had become a local amateur historian, often speaking about the importance of curiosity and the unexpected adventures life can bring. You never know what amazing things you might discover on your family's land, he would tell people. Sometimes the coolest stuff is right under your nose or your feet. Who would have thought that after 50 years, our property would lead to such a great discovery? The Hideaway Hills neighborhood's massive sinkhole and the great discovery it led to remind people that even today, there are still mysteries to uncover and adventures to enjoy. It also shows how strong communities can be in tough times and the lasting human desire to explore. The people of the Hideaway Hills neighborhood now see their town differently. Every crack in the sidewalk or bump in the road could be a sign of something exciting. Who knows what other secrets might be hidden beneath this quiet South Dakota town. If you enjoyed this incredible story of discovery and community resilience, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you ever encountered any unexpected finds in your own backyard? Share your ideas and experiences in the comments below.